With the explosive rise of people like you and me photographing deep space because of the lowering cost of telescope equipment, more people are taking photos of outer space than ever before. But there's one big problem. When you go outside, you're supposed to see a sky full of stars. But when you go out and see them, there's only a couple in the night sky. 99% of people who live in the US and in Europe live in light polluted skies. And unless there's a citywide power outage every time you wanna photograph the stars, you're gonna be traveling a really far distance in order to capture the night sky. But very few of us have a spare 15 to 20 hours to make it out to these dark sky spots and get photos of the stars. For those of us who have been bitten by the astro bug and have fallen head first in this incredible world of taking space photos, there are places where you can leave your telescope set up in dark skies to capture the night sky and they'll be looked after. That means you can control your telescope no matter where you are in the world, giving you access to these dark skies from the comfort of your own home. I'm out here at Starfront Observatories where that very thing happens and I'm gonna show you how. If you've gone through the constant process of driving out somewhere, setting up and polar aligning for the hundredth time, you deserve a certificate telling you that you never need to do that ever again because that process gets old very quickly. <laughs> Not only that, it's time consuming. That's time you could be using shooting space. And let's not forget about those times where you get out there just to realize you forgot a cable or the weather patterns change on a dime. At a place like here at Starfront Observatory, these are the things you don't have to worry about. Now I can already hear a lot of you saying, Ian, this sounds like a huge advertisement for Starfront Observatory, and it is but let me tell you why I'm so hyped about this place. Look, I've been a telescope professional for a long time and I've dealt with loads of remote telescope hosting services. There are remote observatories just like this one, charging over a thousand dollars a month to host your telescope. But at the time of recording, here at Starfront, you can get a place for your telescope for as low as 149 bucks a month. And that 149 a month includes the installation, it includes the pier for your telescope, Peers at other places can cost anywhere from $800 to $3,000. This is amazing because it gives people access to a remote observatory in truly dark skies. Look, I believe we need more astrophotographers taking photos of space and sharing it with the world. Now, when most people think of an astronomical observatory, they think of a huge dome with a giant telescope on the top of a mountain. But let's be honest, most of us don't have that dome money to do that. For the rest of us, we can still access these dark skies from places like here at Starfront Observatory. And what's crazy is this is the fastest growing observatory in the world. I mean, in the last 45 days, over 100 people have signed up to have their telescopes installed here in Texas. Each building they have holds up to 50 telescopes. Right now they have two, but they're building two more in the next couple of weeks. That's how many people are coming in here. But enough talk. I wanna give you a tour of some of the telescopes that are installed here already because I don't want you to get the wrong idea thinking that this is just another observatory for premium level telescopes, like plane waves or software bisque mounts or equipment like that. The gear they've gotten here is gear that everyday astrophotographers like you and me use. Check out this system. This is an Ioptron GEM45 mount and an Ascar FRA 500 telescope. We're not talking about 24 inch plane waves or ASA systems. We're talking about stuff that most astrophotographers are using today. By the way, this one's our good buddy Nico from nebulaphotos.com, so enjoy his telescope. <laughs> and here we've got an 8-inch Edge HD from Celestron on a ZWO mount with a 2600 camera. And what's great about when they install these systems is that they have enough space in between each one so they won't run into each other. So everyone's got plenty of room to slew around with no risk of running into your neighbors. And look at all these systems here, all these refractors mounted on ZWO mounts. We've got Ascar and Stellar View. We even have a Takahashi FSQ here. We've got ZWO cameras. Some of them are running on mini PCs. Some of them are using the ASI Air. Heck, there's even William Optics Red Cat 51s and 61s in the back. So like I said, these are scopes that everyday people are using. Now the most popular mount that I'm seeing out here is the ZWO AM mounts, but the next most popular is these workhorses right here, the CEM 70s from my Optron. This one's mine. This is a beast of a mount. I absolutely love using it. And we've got our Borg telescope and our ZWO 2600 here. And we moved this bad boy all the way from Alabama to here. So we went from a Bortle 6 slash 7 
to out here in some of the darkest skies in Texas. Back in Alabama, we struggled to get RGB data because we were surrounded by light pollution. But here in the dark skies of the Starfriend Observatory, that's not a problem at all. So let's say you're interested in sending your astrophotography rig here. How does this work? From a high level, all you do is go to their website and determine what pier size you need. Then you either ship your gear to the observatory or drop it off in person. They'll install, set up, and polar align your system. And that's it. You'll be imaging deep space from dark skies. They have a section on their website called Remote Imaging 101 that has more in-depth info about getting your system prepared for a remote observatory that I highly recommend you check out if you're interested. Now this observatory is run by Bray Falls. Bray and the staff out at Starfront have tons of experience with building and running observatories and have installed and worked with more telescope systems than most people in the world. Look, I'm not being paid to promote this stuff or make this video. Bray is just a good friend of mine, and I believe in his mission to create access to dark skies for everyone. Here are some of the cool features this observatory has. They have telescope techs on site 24 seven. It's got one of the most active Astro Discord servers I've ever seen with hardware and software discussions, image sharing, and group imaging projects. Thanks to these group imaging projects, we photographed a supernova remnant that's never been photographed before, which we've named the Anchile supernova remnant or Ancile, I don't know how to pronounce it. This supernova remnant is a radio supernova in the constellation Scutum. Scutum is Latin for the shield, so we decided to give the supernova remnant name Anchile for the sacred shield that fell from heaven. We also discovered a brand new planetary nebula labeled under our new catalog, the SFO catalog. So this one's called the SFO-1 Planetary Nebula. We hope to add more to this catalog in the future with more telescopes joining these projects. For you advanced folks out there, the SQM readings are 21.8 on some nights, which makes this place on moonless nights a Bortle 2 really close to the edge of a Bortle 1. And they've got high speed internet. They also have a bunch of land for future buildings with new ones already in the works. The roofs are automated, so they automatically open and close at dawn and dusk. They also have roof status files available so you can automate your system, and the weather sensors on them will automatically close the roofs if the weather conditions get bad, so your equipment is protected. If you're looking for more info, check out the videos on their website. They're super useful for more technical breakdowns of what you need, or just hop in the Discord server and talk to the people who are there. Remote observatories aren't for everyone, but if you're at the stage in your astrophotography journey where you want access to these dark skies and maybe you don't want to polar align for the thousandth time, check out their website in the description or check them out at starfront.space. Anyways, thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you all next time.